Hi there, I'm Peter Upvold. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I managed to flash my TP-Link TLWA801ND um, wireless access point and put the latest release of OpenWRT on it. Um, so in this video, I'm going to show you what I did, um, including the process for actually using the TFTP recovery mode to put the firmware on. Okay, so before we begin, let's just review the requirements that we're going to need to achieve this. First of all, obviously, the actual TP-Link hardware itself. We're going to need a separate computer to do, the, to do some network configuration. On that computer, we will put it onto a different uh, network segment, special magic IP address that the TP-Link uses for the recovery of firmware. Um, and because of that, you're going to need to have proficiency and competence with configuring network settings in your operating system. Um, I'm not going to show you every aspect of that, but because I don't want to encourage people who aren't quite there to brick their device, I'm not going to hold your hand with every aspect of that. And similarly, you're going to need to be able to run a TFTP server. If your separate computer is running Windows, there are free tools that you can download that will let you run a TFTP server. I'll be running Linux and I've already set up the TFTB server and all I'm going to do is drop the firmware in the folder. And you'll need a pencil. You may be able to figure out what for, if not you'll see later. And now of course an obligatory disclaimer. This is quite an advanced process. There is a risk of permanently damaging your device. So don't do it to your only access point. Don't do it if you don't feel that you're comfortable. And obviously, I can't take responsibility if you do break something. So I'm showing you what I did, I'm hoping it's helpful, but it comes with no warranties attached. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to download the up-to-date version. Now there's a warning here, this device will no longer have support at some point by OpenWRT, but at least running OpenWRT is better than the stock firmware which hasn't been touched since 2017 and there may be an opportunity to play around with building it ourselves after the official support ends. So we'll try that out perhaps later. So for now what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down. I have the V5 hardware model. Um, you can find that just by turning the uh, actual device over. It's on a label on the device. So what I'm going to do is for V5 I'm going to download this image. Now if you've not yet put OpenWRT on and you've got the stock firmware, we will need to do the Squash FS TFTP recovery version here and not the Sys upgrade. So we'll go ahead and download this and this is the image we're going to use um, to actually put onto the TP-Link. Okay, so over on the computer that is our separate computer that we're going to use for TFTP, we're going to need to go into the network settings and change the IP address to 192.168.0.66 with the network mask slash 24 or 255.255.255.0. It has to be this special magic IP address because that is what the uh, recovery process uh, actually connects to in order to get the firmware image. So again, must be 192.168.0.66. Once that's set up, uh, we'll go ahead and save out of this um, and then we can make sure that that is our IP address. We're not on DHCP or anything like that. Next, we're going to make sure that in the folder that our TFTP server is serving uh, files from, we've put the recovery image. Now, again, it's critical that this is the recovery image and not the normal sys upgrade. The normal sys upgrade will not work, must be the recovery image. So what I'll go ahead and do is just copy that. So I have that file in downloads. I've just saved it as wrt.bin. Um, I'm going to go ahead and copy it to my TFTP folder. And it does have to have the name tp underscore recovery dot bin. Special name it must have. So we'll go ahead and copy that. Here it is. Just verify that permissions are OK. So anyone can view. Shouldn't be a problem. And additionally, I can check with systemctl status that tftpd-hpa is running, so it's ready to serve. Um, so as soon as we plug in and start the TP-Link up, we will be able to go into the recovery mode and it should pull down the firmware and we should be good. To check that that's going to happen, I'm going to open up Wireshark 
um, just so we can see the packets going across for TFTP. Okay, so we're ready to go. Um, all we need to do is we need to switch on the TP link here whilst using very highly technical tool to hold down the reset button. And then we should see over here on this screen, the TFTP packets. We'll need to keep holding it for quite some time. The lights will be doing something, so we'll watch that process. Um, so as you can see there, TFTP traffic is going across. And we've seen the last block. So I'm going to release the uh, reset button now. And now we'll just wait for the device to boot into the new firmware. This is the anxious wait because we now can't see what's going on. Well, that boots. I'm just going to restart this capture. Right, so that's good. We've got two lights. Um, no scary blinky light pattern of not happiness. Now, it is likely that the configuration of it is no longer on this network. I don't know, we're now in the default configuration for OpenWRT. So you'll now need to change the IP address again, or set it to DHCP, and we can go hopefully to the web interface. So we will need to switch our connection back um, over to uh, DHCP. Uh, oops, uh, so IP configuration automatic. Okay, so 192.168.1.1. So as you can see, we now have OpenWT, no password is set, we'll need to go ahead and do that. Um, and this device is now ready to go. How exciting.